in the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God bless you. The name of 
say that again, church. above all names. Jesus, name above all names. Healer, one who takes all pain. Savior, risen from the grave. Your name is Jesus, Lord over all. What an awesome time to be born. Listen, listen to me. If you got a lot of gifts, praise the Lord. If you did, praise the Lord. No matter what, praise the Lord. He is the gift. Él es el regalo para cada uno de nosotros. He's everything you and I need. And you know, I want to read, I want to read a, some scripture here. Amen. From the, the, the book of Luke, chapter 1. And then we're going to go from there. Because look over here at me, church, for one moment. We're about to come into a new year. In another week, we'll be going in. But we got to be better than we were this year. We got to believe the word of God. We got to stand on the word of God. Look, 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 look at me for a moment. Don't stand on your fears. Don't stand on your doubts. Come on. But stand on your faith in the word of God. Stand on the Lord with all your heart. Let nothing, nothing move you from your faith in God. He is everything. He's above all things. Amen. And I want to read uh, from verse 26 on down. And we're going to read Luke chapter 1. Amen. Verse 26 on down. And we're going to read it this way. I'm, I'm reading to you from... Uh, 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 the Amplified Version, it says, Now in the sixth month after that, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth. Now, now imagine this. Nazareth was the barrio. <laughs> Nobody liked to go there. Ahí estaban los todos, ahí Nazareth, nosotros. Era el barrio de Israel. That's where God chose. Look, 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 look. How many of you were lost at one time? And, and, and we, we were lost in our own mess. And yet he extended, he extended his holy hand and brought us out of that mess. Isn't he a good God? But a mighty God. So look at this. But Mary, to a, to a girl never having been married and a virgin engaged to be married to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, Endued with grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed, favored of God, you are before all other women. Now, I want, you to, I want you to understand something. That word there is so very powerful. Endued with grace, with God's unmerited favor. 
Now, now, now imagine this. When you're born again and you're walking by grace, estás andando por gracia. Are you with me? There's no devil in hell can take you down unless you let him. Are you with me, church? So look at this. Verse 29. But when, he, when she saw him, she was greatly troubled and disturbed and confused at what he said and kept re revolving in her, in her mind what such a greeting might mean. She said, to her, what, what is going on here? What's happening here? Now, now look at this. Your experience, nobody had that experience but you. That was your born again experience. Nobody had my experience. I had my own. Are you with me, church? And, and that experience was given to me for a reason. Just like your experience is being given to you with a reason. There's a purpose behind it. And we're coming to that place now. Amen. We're getting closer to the rapture. It might be Christmas, but the rapture can still happen. All right? And, and, so, and so imagine we're, we're living in an hour or at a time where the rapture could take place. All right? So there's got to be a purpose. Look at your neighbor and say, there must be a purpose for you Now, now tell them again, tell them again. It goes beyond your gifts that you've already received. It goes beyond all the stuff, all the mush, and all that stuff. It goes beyond all that. Beyond the frijoles, and the chile, and the tamales, and everything. It goes beyond that. Ah, está conmigo. Praise the Lord. Now look at this. But when she saw him, she was greatly troubled and disturbed and confused at what he said and kept revolving in her mind what such a greeting might mean. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found grace, free, spontaneous, absolute favor, and loving kindness with God. You have found favor with God. L listen, you're born again. You are born again with favor. We're all different. We're all different. We all have different, different, uh, uh, well, for instance, uh, I might weigh more than you do. Or, or you may be taller than me. Or, or your desire of food could be different than mine. Or we're all different. But, but nonetheless, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What a mighty God. All right? Now, now I want to ask you a very important question. We're going to get into this because uh, uh, I, want you to, uh, I want you to see this with me. Amen. How many of you want a, a better year this year? How many of you are tired of letting the devil just run amok with you? Am I the only one? I think I think that uh, I think that if you're if you're real, if you're born again, if you're real, a real Christian, you don't want no more defeats. You want victories. Listen, when I was 
when I was a drug addict and an alcoholic and messed up out there, all I had was defeats. And made up, let's look at this, made up victories. Because you can't have victories in the devil's camp. He's the only one that has victories. So he tears you up. But when I came from that life into the new life, I said, man, this, I don't want to exchange this for, for that old life anymore. I don't want what I had before. I want this life. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy what the world does. Okay, and, and we think that's fun. That ain't no fun, you know? And, and, and I looked at it like that, and I thought, this is crazy. But when I came to the Lord, Amen. when I came to the Lord, oh, Hallelujah. my God, that was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And, and, and the one thing about it is that I did not know that that was just the beginning Amen. of a journey yeah. I was going to be taking in the Lord. Amen. What do you mean a journey? Yeah, some of you like to, like to, you know, take drives to the mountains or go on vacations and, and all that and everything. But this journey is going to take you against, listen to me, against the powers of darkness. I didn't know that. I thought, I thought you just accepted the Lord, carried a Bible into church, walked home, and was a good kid. You know, you were like a good Boy Scout and everything. And, 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 and that's what I thought Christianity was. It wasn't until I, after I got born again that I really realized later, wow, what did I get into here? <laughs> but it's the greatest life it's the greatest life the world has ever known. Amen. Now, I want you to see something with me. When I read this about Mary having this baby in a manger, when I read this, when I read how God is sending this little infant to be born. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and we don't have the time right now, but if you go to the book of Hebrews chapter 1 or chapter 2, you'll find there where Jesus was actually the splendor or the emotions or the feelings uh, of Jesus, and he was brought out from that to come to this world. He came, he left everything to come here. Now, now, now you got you to gotta tell yourself, imagine all, all the excuses we make for why we're in trouble or why we're in a mess or why we do this, or why every, all the excuses. And the Lord is looking and he's saying, I came to this world to give you life yes. and life more abundantly yes. You know what he said? He said, I came to give you victory. Amen. Victory, power. Amen. Oh, you better lift him up. Amen. Imagine he was born in a manger. He was born in a manger, but he didn't, he didn't just stay there. He went throughout, as he grew, he went throughout Israel, through Galilee and Nazareth and all over, and everywhere he went, he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't stand to see people in trouble, people that were possessed, people that were sick, people that were in, in different forms uh, attacked by the enemy, 
that, he will that the devil was destroyed. He came and he would heal them and he would deliver them. And, and uh, Are you with me, church? There was, a, there was a blind man. There was a blind man that he had to pray for twice to receive his sight. And you can read it in the Bible. It's there. He, he prayed for this blind man. But, but look at this. But, but then when he finished praying for him and he received his sight, he told him this. Now don't go back to town. Don't go back to your old friends. Don't go back to what you had before because they'll steal your miracle. They'll take away what you just, you just got. Are you with me here this morning? And there's some of you sitting here. You can't, you can't see yourself without those old friends. And, the, and that old mess. And, and you need to realize something. He came to give you victory. I mean victory. Total victory. Somebody, somebody told me one day, well, how have you been able to... Brother, when I, when I got saved, I, I separated myself. I separated myself. I didn't hang around with the old crowd. I didn't go back to that. And I didn't hang around with the new crowd because it was not my age. They were all in their 80s. So it was me and Jesus and prayer. We hung around together. Now, now look, look over here at me. There's a lot of things, and I, and I want you to see this with me. There's a lot of things we open ourselves up to. But we should, if we, it would be opened if we didn't go there where we were. If we didn't go back to our old way, it wouldn't be there. Well, Pastor, I get so lonely. I get no, 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 no. Listen to me, lonely. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Jesus Christ will fulfill your entire life. Oh, you better give him a better praise than that. He, he will fulfill you. He will keep you. If, if listen to me, if you want to be kept. It's not up to the Lord to interrupt your will, brother. You got to surrender your will to the Lord so that the Lord can keep you in the road that he wants you to go on. Otherwise, otherwise, you're always opening them doors. The doors are always opening. And, and, and I believe that this new year, God wants his body, God wants the church to march in victory and in power. So they told, they told T.D. Jakes, how many know who he is? They told him one day, the, the, he kept praying for this, this person over and over and over, and it was the same problem. Boom, 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 the same problem over and over and over and over. It's that girl, it's that woman, it's that man. It's, you know, it's, I can't help but go over there with my friends. I get the same problem over and over and over and over. And he finally shook that person. He told him, go get you a different sin. They didn't want to quit. They, they wanted to stay in the mess and they wanted everybody else to pray for them. Are you with me? I mean, if you really want victory, listen, I want, I want the blessing of the Lord. I, I want to walk with, with God. I want, I want the Lord to honor me. I want to honor the Lord. 
How many want, how many want God to honor you? I mean, he wants to. He, he wants to. So, so you got to say this. Listen, do you, know, do you know what you do in life? Listen to me. What, you're, what you do in life. I'm going to say something that nobody ever wants to say. We're so afraid of hurting little feelings. But listen to me. Do you know that what you are in life is what you're offering him? He offered you his son. And then we want to offer him all the mess. And it's okay. You come to him with the mess. But when he cleans you up, stay clean. But pastor, does it not mean that sometimes I might stumble or fall? Yes, but get up. Get up. Get up in the name of Jesus and tell the Lord, Father, forgive me for falling, forgive me for stumbling, but this is it for the devil. Kick the devil out the door and start walking with God. Hello, are you still here with me? Praise the Lord. Praise oh, Pastor, I don't know what I'm going to do. This man, he keeps stealing my money, and he, and he keeps going out drinking and drugging, and then he comes back and wants to break the door down. And, he, and, and, and how many times has he done that? Every weekend. Heck, throw him out. Amen. Get you, no, oh, brother, listen to me. Get, get you, somebody will tell you, go get you another man. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you, get you some guts. <laughs> and I know some of you guys don't like that because you've been used to doing that to your ladies. But man, brother, you guys got to cool it, man. Praise the Lord. Okay, now look at this. What is, what is he looking for? What is he looking for? What did he come to? Why did, why did he come in a manger? Why, why, why did, did he come to the lowest of lowest? Why did he do that? Because look at this. Look at, look at me. That's where we all came out of. Ya lo sacó, lo sacó de la basura. I don't care if you're a billionaire, you're still trash. Until you meet Jesus. You gotta know him. You gotta meet him. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody with me? I, 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 I'm sorry if I'm not as as you know, as you know, like, like a lot of those motivational speakers are today. I'm not a motivational speaker, I'm a pastor. And and let me tell you something. Let, let me tell you something. I like to I like to shoot with both barrels. Because I only got you today and then after this you're gonna leave and you're gonna go home and open some gifts, smell the perfume and all that early. And I hope that none of that leaves what I'm telling you today. Look at this. Go, go with me. Are you with me today? Yeah. All right. Are you with me? Look at this. Go with me to John chapter 9, and we're going to read from verse 35 down. Jesus had just finished opening a blind man's eyes. 
And and they took that young kid and they were questioning him. And I mean, they were, they were about to destroy him because he received his sight. Listen, the world wants to keep you in bondage. The world wants to keep you the way you are. They don't want you to change. But Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. Victory. Say victory. Now look at this. And Jesus heard that they had put him out. This was the, the, the man that was healed from blind eyes. And he said, do you believe in and adhere to the Son of Man or the Son of God? Do you believe in him? Do you believe who he is? Listen, you got to believe, church. Let's go on. And he answered, who is he, sir? Tell me that I may believe in and adhere to him. Let's go on. And Jesus said to him, you have seen him. In fact, he's talking to you right now. Let, let me say this to you. How many here have had a real, a good, nice, personal experience with the Lord? Not all of you? Let me, let me ask that question again. How many here are born again? Let me see your hands. You can't be born again without that experience, church. I'm telling you. I'm sorry. You, you, you want to tell me all kinds of stuff. Somebody told you. No, no. The Word of God says you must be born again. Okay? So, so imagine he finds this blind boy that he healed his eyesight. They threw him out for healing. Can, can you imagine? Look, look over here. Every time you press in to, to, to walk with God, every time you're going to move forward and do right, you're not going to follow everybody, you're not going to go after them, you're not going to, you're not going to do any of that stuff. Anything you were doing before, the enemy's going to come after you. Do you understand that? He doesn't want you to be made whole, complete. Now, now look, look over here at me. Some people get a touch, but that doesn't mean they're whole. Some people get slain and they go right back to their mess. That doesn't mean they're, they're made whole. When you are made whole, I guarantee you, body, soul, and spirit, you will never go back to the devil. It's like me saying, this young lady here, I don't know, her, what's your name? Kathleen. Kathleen? If I had a, a key here to a brand new Cadillac and then I had a, 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 another key to an old jalopy that was falling apart, which one would you want? I don't have a driver's license. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. You can sleep in it. Of course you would pick a Cadillac. Of course the Cadillac. Right. You take the Cadillac. Because I use a mechanic and he can fix the jalopy. Well, yeah, but well, you're going to give him the jalopy. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. The Lord offers you the best. The devil offers you the worst. How can we go back to the enemy after, the Bible says, after tasting that the Lord is good. Am I right? right. How, could, how, could, how could we do that? You can't. 
There's no comparison. If, if you go back towards the enemy, when you know what God has for you is better than what the enemy has, wow. Ask yourself, wow, I'm, I've, I've really lost it up here. Because what God has for me is greater than I can even imagine. So it would be greater than what I, I can imagine. And, and, and I want you to know something for those, some of you that are sitting here, that, that maybe you're not walking with God right. or the, We're going to pray for you today. Because my desire, listen to me, is not to put you down. My desire is to get you to say to yourself, I want, I want better than what I got right now. I want, I want better. How many want better? If you want better, give him praise. Okay. So let's read this. And Jesus said to him, have you seen him? In fact, he is talking to you right now. Let's go on. And he called out, Lord, I believe, I rely on, I trust, I cleave to you. And he worshipped him. Can you imagine? This man had never, he worshipped the Lord. Listen, let's go on. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment as a separator. Now look at this. As a separator. To take you from darkness into light. And so you could know the difference. Well, I don't think the Lord cares if I... <laughs> Who said he don't? Well, stop right here. I want to buy me a six-pack right now. The Lord don't care. He knows I love him. You're not going to heaven because you love him or because you say you love him. You must be born again. You must be transformed. Changed. Do you men in the home believe that? Huh? What about you girls? You got to be born again. Praise God. Who's that young lady right there? Come over here. Give her a mic. Get the mic for me. I want to have her share a short testimony of her life. Now look at this. One day, you can look over here, sister. One day you were blind, but now you should be able to what? See. What? See. Tell them. See. See. Now look at this. Not like see, no, see. Okay. Let me see. Okay, tell them your name, uh, your date of birth, your social security, your bank account. No. Tell them what, what you were doing before you came to the Lord. Um, before I came to the Lord, I was um, fully into alcohol and cocaine. Um, I was literally fearless of the world. I would just literally, like, I was down to do anything um, that wasn't right. Um, I ended up being a, um, part of the strip club. Um, I danced. Um, it came heavily onto me in there that I would even say that the strip club was my home. Cause I was always there all the time, even when I didn't have to dance. I would just spend my whole time there from opening to closing. Um, and 
I just got deeper and deeper into alcohol, but I was just trying to numb a pain and emptiness. Um, every relationship just didn't work out. I just didn't want to deal with anything. Um, I would have good jobs. Um, I was able to work under the influence all the time. Um, it was just super heavy. Um, I came into the home, well, because my cousin was in the men's home, and that day I was, I lived in Cherry Creek, and I would always go on benches. I was on a month bench, and I ended up in Brighton, and it was kind of cold. It was, um, I lost my shoes, and I was just walking around with my alcohol bag, and I just called my primo, and I was like, hey, primo, can you, like, pick me up and take me back home? And he was like, yeah, and I would always talk to my cousin, and my primo was like, um, hey, prima, like, you can do it, you know, because I'd be like, primo, how, did, how can you maintain sober? He's like, you need to give yourself to the Lord. You, he's like, go to the home. He's like, I went to the home, and I was like, okay, well, take me to my apartment. And he thought that once he was going to drop me off, I didn't want to come anymore. And I'm like, no, you're going to take over. I'm going to tell you what to do, what to take. And I gave him my keys and went to my apartment. And I ended up leaving the home in three months. And I remember my niece, Alexa, she's only, she, she's 10, 11 years old, and she was kind of shocked. She told me, she was like, oh, your whole apartment was full of liquor and cocaine straws um, in the bathroom, under my bed, my couch. There was alcohol bottles everywhere. Um, and she was like, I, I was in shock. She's like, I'm surprised you were still alive. And it hit me because she's only 10 or 11, and she looked up to me. And once I left those three months, um, it didn't take long for me to um, go back and to the world. And it got even way more hard because the enemy does come at you seven times more. And I remember I was just in the back seat, and I was just getting tired of it. And I was like, I'm going to call. And I was just sitting in the back seat of the car with my friends. We had just came back from the liquor store. And Brandy answers. And I was like, hey, I need to come back. I'm not doing like good at all. Like, you know, and the enemy was just making excuses for me to come back. And the next time I, they would tell me, like, oh, just um, there's this thing that you just send a picture of your palm in your hand and call this number, and they'll send you some pills over the mail and you'll take and you can be good in seven days and you'll be fine but deep down i knew i had to come and my friends are like well god is anywhere but what they don't understand is like the altar and being you know like in your knees on your face getting the presence of the lord is it's what i needed my spirit was hungry and i can feel myself dying spiritually because i would tell them I'm like, can someone stay with me? Because I feel like I'm not going to wake up. Um, and my friend, I texted, and I was like, I need to go back. And my friend didn't hesitate, came from work, picked me up. I was in Aurora. There was like nine of us living in and out in there. And I came back, and I just came back with like uh, my toothbrush and Gatorade, and, and that was it. Now I'm here. I'm here. I've been back for five months now. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And she's doing good. Thank you, Hita. I imagine taking the blind eye, the blind mind, the blind spirit, and then opening that eye, that spiritual eye, so that we can see. Now look at this. You don't have to let the devil beat you up, bro. Amen. You don't have to let the devil have his way in your life. So look at this. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment. Remember that manger? He came into this world. He declared it right there. As a separator in order that there may be separation between those who believe on me 
and those who reject me. See, you, you, you got to know that what's robbing you and, and, and taking you for everything you have, it's the world. Your own way of life is sucking your life out of you. And he came to give you life. He came to give you life. God, you better, you better praise him. Amen. Say with me, this year I'm going to do, I'm going to be the best this year. I'm, I'm going to walk with God. And I'm going to, I'm going to win others to the Lord. Instead of always throwing the llorada, you know, you're going to start doing something for God. Look at this. To make the, the, the sightless see and to make those who see become blind. You know why he said that? Because there's so many that say they, they see, but they don't see right. They're blinded. Let's go on. I just want to speak to, that, that's, a, that's a song. <laughs> uh, another song. <laughs> and some Pharisees who were near hearing this remark said to him, are we also blind? Say yes. Yeah. Yes. You're going to find a lot of people out there. Oh, you don't have to believe. That guy don't want you to. He's just keeping you from having a good time. He wants you to be a dead old person. I've heard it all. I've heard all kinds of crazy stuff. But you know what? When they're in the hospital dying, guess who they call? When, when, the, when they're so messed up on drugs and alcohol and they can't handle themselves, guess who they call? Oh, you're not hearing me. And, and you want to know something? And I reply, we answer that call. Because God called us to do that. Are you with me, church? I mean, we, 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 we think the world, if we let go of the world, we think we're missing out on a lot. The only thing you're missing out on is hell. Now look at this. Go with me to the book of Luke. Are you with me? Say, Luke, Luke, chapter 10. Okay, he sends them out. Seventy of them. Go out. Cast out devils. Heal the sick. Do what you're supposed to do. So they started going all over. And they came back. And they were excited. They said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us in your name. Lord, we're doing a lot of things to help these people. And God, God is healing them. Imagine, they begin to see the impossible. Right. Look over here. What you and I should be doing in our day right now to help people come to Christ, we should be doing that instead of keep going in the same circle over and over right. and over and over and over and over. We should be on fire. Amen. We should be, oh, brother, listen. You, are to, you, you need to know what you possess. The next time you feel like picking up the telephone and, and calling your, your, your sister in the Lord, oh, help me again. I don't know what I'm doing. T tell yourself, I'm not calling nobody. Devil, you're getting out right now. You move out. There's not enough room here for me and you. 
Ah, you don't want to hear all that. Huh? Huh? No, no, no. So look at this, verse 17 down. Let's read this because this is, this is where the Lord is trying to bring this church this year. Amen. This year, este año, para ganar al mundo al Señor, to bring the world to Christ. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Pastor, you act like you ain't got no problems. No, I got, I got, I got problems all the time. I get, man, brother, I got, I got all the problems of the body. I got the problems of the organization. I got the bo brother. I got the problems of my home. I got the problems that my 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 family gives sometimes and all that. No, church. But I'm not going to let the devil take me down with that. Come on, give the Lord praise. I, I'm going to live in victory. I'm going to live with God. I'm going to live walking with the Lord. Are you with me, church? Anybody home? So look at this. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. For a long time, I've seen the body be subject to the demons. I've seen the devil run people amok, and you keep telling them, he thought, don't, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't do this. Don't, don't, don't go to Texas. <laughs> don't, 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 don't do a lot, a lot of things that they're doing. And don't do it. Do you know why God allows you to go through some problems? Teach us. Teach us what? Teach us how to defeat the devil. He'll, he'll teach you that you are the head and not the tail. That you can walk in victory. Oh, you got to give him praise. All, all the stuff that, that you've allowed to drag you down. You need to throw it out the door in the name of Jesus. And you need to tell yourself, I'm going to walk with God. And I'm going to walk in victory. And I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to let the Lord bless me. Anybody here? We, we, would, we would spend time, Pastor Ed, myself, Brother Robert, we would spend time with people. Come on. No, you can't do that. Come on. Pick yourself up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And then we started thinking about They probably don't want to go. I'm trying to force them to go to heaven, and they don't want to go to heaven. Huh? So now they come and they say, oh, pastor, the devil. Be well, then he, if that's what you want. Huh? I mean, you can't, every day, the same demon. I said, man, I, I feel like T.D. Jakes. Get another one. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 don't get me wrong. We got to be merciful. And, and we got to help people sometimes, encourage them. Yeah. You know? But brother... When, when, when the following year you're still carrying the same devil, yeah. something's wrong. Yeah. And, you, and, you, and you're filled with the Holy Ghost and you speak in tongues, but you're still battling the same battle? No, 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 no. Listen, you're not letting that go. You're hanging on to it. You want, you want the Lord. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home today. I know that the Word of God blessed you richly. But I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know him, today would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. 
Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you till the next time. Amen.